The Larson renovation here in Fort Collins gives us a great opportunity to learn about solar water heating systems. We're going up on the roof to talk to the expert doing the work and we'll learn about panels themselves as well as some basics about the system. Today I'm up on the Larson's roof with Darren Hine and Darren is the president of Hindsight Solutions. Darren and his team are installing a solar water heating system. So, Darren, tell us a little bit about the solar panels themselves. Uh, the panels themselves are the only flat mounted uh, or deck mounted roofing panels that they have so far. Uh, the one I'm installing is the v -Lux brand, which has been sold over in Europe and Australia for five years. It's one of the top selling brands over there. Uh, they just launched it in the United States April 1st of last year, and they uh, only have five-star installers, people they hand-picked to install them. They're trying to combat all the bad installs of the late 70s and 80s, where they had good panels and bad installers, or bad panels and good installers, or a little of both. So... And what's the size on these? Because um, there's two panels here, uh, right? These are they're, they're roughly 58 by by 60. Okay. Is roughly what they are. Uh, one panel, they're SRCC 300 approved. Uh, they have more surface daylight surface area than any other panel out there. Uh, but when they actually do measurements, they measure the total area instead of the glass area. It's a little odd, but uh, the. The panels themselves are designed so even if they're due west or due east, they're still running at 85% efficiency. Uh, and again, they're, they're designed to sit flat on the roof and then shingle around or metal roof around them. That way, in the future, if you ever have to re-roof, you don't have to tear the whole panels off and decommission the system to roof it and then put them back together. They just stay where they are like a skylight would. Okay. And these are facing pretty much due south, so... These are pretty much due south. They'll have to do a little tree trimming here because they're, they're directly under a tree. But they're elm trees, so he can cut, them, cut these trees down halfway to the bottom, and within two years they'll be up to the roof level again. It's kind of nice as far as the elms are concerned. This system relies 99% on, <coughs> on the sun to heat it up. The system is good to negative 40 degrees. Uh, it's got a propylene glycol system in it that circulates, and depending on the temperature uh, outside, it tells you how fast the liquid's going to circulate inside of it. The sun's going to heat up the propylene glycol, and it's going to go down into an existing solar hot water tank that we have down in the basement. Uh, it's connected to these with a flexible stainless steel pipe. Uh, the sun heats up coils inside of our hot water tank and then normal domestic water flows into our tank past the coils, heats that up. And then the way we have this system is he has an existing hot water tank that our system will dump into that, feeds his hot water tank so its thermostat never kicks the heat off, which is really nice. Um, the only time that heat will kick on is if it's cloudy like this for four or five days and these panels aren't getting warm. Uh, or drop below a certain temperature, negative 40 is what the book says. I'd say zero degrees or less, this is gonna, the other system might kick on. And that's an electric backup? That's, a, that's an electric backup. Okay. Or uh, the, our solar hot water tank has an electric element in it. So we could either hook that up and use just our tank and not have an existing tank. Or what I like to do is if they have an existing tank, We'll hook ours up and dump into theirs, and we won't hook the element up on our solar hot water tank, so they have an emergency backup. If their old tank ever goes out, they can just switch the wire over to the solar tank, and then it's a regular hot water heater as well as a solar hot water heater. And I'm sorry, that's what you're doing here, right? That's what we're doing here is a preheat system, is what they call it. Okay, great. Um, then, this compared to conventional, the other one, anytime the, the temperature in the tank, uh, conventional one, anytime the temperature drops below a certain degrees, that was going to kick on and it's going to heat up the water again. Which means in the middle of the night, if you haven't used your water but the temperature has dropped in your tank, it's going to kick on whether you use it or not. Um, 
with this, it's going to preheat. It preheats that existing tank. That thermostat never, uh, never kicks on, and our thermostat will regulate it. It's also got a mixing valve in it, so if it ever gets too hot, high summer, it, it does uh, adds a little cool water, so your one tank doesn't get over 160. Um, but this one's just relying on the sun and with the thermostat keeps it heating all the time. If for some reason they were to use up all their hot water, it takes four hours for the sun to heat up an 80 gallon hot water tank, which is outstanding as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, with a traditional electric hot water, it could take two to three hours to heat up a whole hot water or a whole tank, 60 gallons, to heat that all up. Uh, that's fuzzy math there, so. Yeah. Not exactly. Uh, on all the traditional, traditional ones. Uh, nice thing is, the sun's heating this up, the solar hot water tank will only lose about 10 degrees in an 8 hour period. So as soon as the sun goes down, by the time the morning kicks on, your solar hot water tank is still around 140, 50 degrees. So you still have 80 gallons you can use right away first thing in the morning. Yeah, that was a question that I had, is what happens overnight without the sun, but that's great. Yes, it's uh, not bad at all. Darren just gave us some great information about the solar panels themselves and the overall workings of the system. You'll definitely want to tune into part two, where we go down into the basement, check out the tanks, the plumbing, the controls, and all that interaction. And Darren will also talk more about how to select a good contractor for this type of project, talk a little bit about the costs of the system and some of the rebates available. So we'll see you soon.